Hi, Joe. Hi. You're a sheer veteran in the techno and hardcore scenes. Mm -hmm. How has the sound evolved over the, over the past 30 years and uh, how did the music change and uh, how did it change in terms of producing and making music? Um, but producing it's like, um, you know, maybe this picture of a wave of a sound, like how it was like 20 years, 25 years ago when the wave was like, like this and now you have a wave of the sound is like massive. This is the point. Okay, um, how did your career kick off and why did you get involved in this type of music? So, uh, it was like uh, before I was punk, post gothic guy, and um, I went to Manchester uh, to, have a, to see some gig. It was in 1988. And, um, so uh, I went to the studio of Factor Records from Joy Division, the New Order, and I asked, okay, you have any gigs for tonight because I'm here? And, and they told me, sorry, we don't have any gig, but we have a new club called Hacienda. And uh, okay, but you are young guy, French guy, lost here, so I don't want you to be disappointed. So he made me, he made some, we a post-it, paper, he made some VIP pass, I say, get it, and maybe it will change your life, or maybe you get, will get bored because of music. And I went there, and for me it was the first house house party. And I, I was already making music with machines since 1984, and uh, when I saw guys playing, like, on the bass, playing uh, live with machines, I was like, yeah, cool. I found a way to make music. Like, I want to follow this way to make house it house techno stuff like that. Yeah. And then I came back home and make some music again. Okay, you're one of the few live act artists in the hardcore scene. Mm -hmm. uh, why did you choose to present your music in this type of way and not uh, like? Yeah. Your other colleagues. So for tonight it will be different because I will play mainly hardcore. So uh, I decided to play a DJ set because my like I said hardcore only hardcore is not ready. So but uh, the thing with with uh, machines is like a challenge. It's not like I know you can do it better with computer, Ableton, stuff like that. Or but with machines it's like a real challenge for me. Like because it's like not too much memory and you have two machines and you have to do some sound with it. So it's like a journalist, you know, it's like a, um, it's, instead of playing with two balls, you play with eight balls. So mm -hmm. for me, it's like really exciting. I always need, and I don't trust computer. That's the thing. Um, your debate uh, on stage was uh, almost a decade later after your first tracks came out. Mm -hmm. uh, what took you so long to get on stage? Uh, because I was like uh, more than, it was like 12 years before when I started to play with machine, like working with machine in, in my home, I was singer in some band, so I didn't want it to be DJ. I was going to party, enjoy it, uh, taking information, but uh, with no idea I will be uh, DJ. It was no not even a clue, not even a maybe, something like that. And uh, so I was just like doing the music at home for my pleasure, my own pleasure. And uh, one friend of mine, she said, okay, this is my birthday, it was 96. And she said like, please come at least once for my birthday party. And I said, okay, but it will be the first and the last. And I didn't know how would be a pleasure to play for people. And I remember for all my life, and then I met some people there, they say, we want you in my party the next weekend, and then I never stop, and uh, I really like it. It's one thing more than just only make music at home, it's like uh, now I have to submit and see. It's like, and now it's more and more like, uh, I've got this uh, fear stage, always before, because I, uh, uh, even the party was good the weekend before, it's always a challenge. Yeah. So it's for me like a really fucking nice to, 
to do it. Okay, uh, you said that uh, when you had your first gig, you thought it would be your first and your last yeah. one. Yeah. But uh, over the years, you have more than uh, 700 gigs all over the world. Uh, it was like uh, 700 years when we somebody asked me about how many gigs I made. So I start to count it 10 years ago. So it, I guess now it's like more than a thousand. <laughs> Okay, and uh, you said you met a lot of people uh, uh, when you had your gigs. Um, mm -hmm. uh, are there any very dear places you visited and uh, very special places you've played at? Very special place. It's always like here, like some place like when something starts. You know, it's like a little scene, like uh, Bulgaria, Lithuania, Japan, uh, Colombia. It's a, uh, it's really small scene. So it's like always a good, like first step on the on the scene to just like uh, okay this is good challenge because it's like not like big or huge like in France or or Italy or the Czech Republic but it's always a good thing to at least do the first step. So for me it's something like something really interesting. Like in Japan was a fucking interesting when they asked me to come and I say okay I know it was only party for 50 or 150-50 people, but it was like really nice because someone have to do it, <laughs> so why not? Yeah, um, and over the years I'm sure you've had a lot of fun stories uh, at places you've played. Mm -hmm. Would you like to share an interesting or very fun story? Oh, uh, not much, but a uh, lot. No, I mean a lot, but uh, I don't have any... Uh, right now any example but one really interesting thing was uh, the guy who, uh, who opened the door in the factory records when I asked for a gig uh, when in 2006 I was in movie watching a 24 hour party people and it was a story of uh, Tony Wilson the manager of Joy Division New Order and then I found some documentary and I found out the guy who opened the door, a bit drunk, was Tony Wilson. <laughs> so it was like, fuck, and he died like few, I guess two years after, and I never say to him like, thank you because you changed, this changed really my life, you know. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's the most interesting story of my whole career be because of this start. I never knew it was this guy like Tony Wilson when I made him. So. Okay, you've traveled all over the world. How is your music accepted around the globe? Ah, oh, it's different. It's different of... I don't know. Uh, it's, people are changing, like, generation of techno people are always changing. So it's not about, like... Uh, I know even, like, for my fans, there are some fans who like my music 20 years ago, 15 years ago, 10 years ago, 5 years ago, or right now. So I can even play for uh, to all the people. So it's like just moving and uh, growing. So I don't know, some people can, can be like, maybe, oh, we, we prefer what I did, like, uh, even when I, what I play tonight. Well, some people will be disappointed because I don't play techno, pure techno. And I will play hardcore, or oh, and some people will be happy because I play hardcore and the techno. So I don't care. I just play what I want to play. And my usually my life set is even more uh, special. Like it's going from techno, art tech, art floor, French core, uh, going to hardcore. So uh, I know some people will be upset because in the part of my my set will be something they don't like. But I just. Not really don't care, I really care what the people think. But the first thing is like, now I'm thinking about myself, like what I want to play. And then if the people like it, great. If the people don't like it, sorry. But it's the thing I want to do. Yeah. Okay, uh, I think Bulgaria is one of the countries you've already visited. Mm -hmm. And um, what type of villain did the last party leave in you? What type of what? Uh, what type of feeling did the party leave in you? No, oh, it was like the party was really nice. That's why I asked Joy to come back because uh, after three years I said, please, I want to come back in this country. It was really nice, you know. I met so many people, and it was like a really friendly party. And 
I met almost all the people from the parade, so it was like a really interesting and no, I have got a fucking nice feeling, that's why I asked for coming back. Yeah. And I wish to come more often here. Yeah, it's nice having you here. Yeah. Thank you. Um, are you working on any new projects and uh, mm -hmm. what type of projects are you working on and uh, when are they going to be released? Ah, okay, Which so uh, I was already, I made already some tr uh, hardcore track in the past and I play already many years hardcore since the beginning. So, uh, but I have, I want to separate my project uh, techno and hardcore because the people are confused and sometimes I'm just allowed to play one hour and in one hour I can go from techno, art tech and French core and art core. So I decide like after art rock festival when they asked me to play industrial art core, I say okay uh, and I realized the new art core scene is really interesting like Prospect Recall, Erezy and uh, so and they are all, many of them are my friends, so they gave me so many tracks, I said, fuck, I have to do something like that, you know. And uh, so I really, so that's why I have this new project, Wolf and Noise. And uh, the thing is, I'm, I'm starting to make like tracks for some label, maybe, I will see. It's like, I have to do it. And uh, uh, at the moment, the problem is I've got so many gigs every weekend, so I've got going home to from Monday and mon uh, from Friday I'm going in some of the gigs so uh, it's not easy to in the same time get some new machines so I have to work with my new machines I have to uh, uh, make some remix in even my other project more dark techno stuff so they ask me some tracks so it's like even it's only my job at the moment uh, I don't have time so uh, I hope would be my first release about like April, May, I guess. We will see. Like I want to make crossbreed hardcore stuff. Yeah, really. This is my private priority. Okay. Um, if there wasn't a question that you wanted to be asked, but uh, a question that has never been asked before, what would it be? And please answer that question. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Good question. <laughs> uh, uh, I guess, but it's already like a question so many people ask me, like, because I'm one of the oldest DJ in even in the old electronic music. So it's like uh, some people ask me uh, when you will stop because. Now I feel like always like I'm even older than the people are uh, older than the parents of the people are going at the party. So uh, I'm always asking myself how long it will be because I need to also thinking about my private life, get wife, kids, and but I'm still fucking loving partying. So uh, and uh, even I'm one of the older because I'm not used to work, so I'm still like uh, enjoying party. And even I don't play, I've got one weekend free, I'm going to party. Because there is no way I'm going st staying home and doing just nothing, because I'm working at home during the week, so on Friday I have to go out. So this is, I think, even my own question from my, from my life. And every year I say, okay, next year I will celebrate my 20 years on stage, and always I say, oh, Every year it's like, maybe next year will be the last. And I'm um, asking myself since now almost 10 years, like maybe this is the last, mm -hmm. I don't know. That's it. Okay, Joe, it was really nice talking to you. Thank you, thank you a lot. <laughs>